she's dynamite. You can, she's, you know, she's not very tall, but she's very powerful. I don't attribute that to her height. I attribute it to her genes. <laughs> Carolina, all old timey streets here. The tale of two cities here in New York. Whether he's actually left Knoxville, so he's arrived somewhere between that and nine o'clock in the tall of the night section. And drop it into one of our collection barrels. Let's go to the library. I think that's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> It's just great to hear the stories of why people run. There are people that run with us who are breast cancer survivors, people who have lost their mothers or, or another loved one to breast cancer, some people who just want to come out and get in great shape or do something good. It's just a great way to train, uh, sort of keeps you going. It truly is a tale of two cities here in New York. Here in Midtown and Upper Manhattan, the shops are packed with tourists and the roads, well, they're jammed with taxi drivers in a hurry. But in Lower Manhattan, near Ground Zero, it is an entirely different story. Good morning. Marianne Grigsby is the only Jacksonville Red Cross worker allowed onto Ground Zero. She said from the moment that she saw this tragedy happen, she knew she needed to be here. She's the salt of the earth. Uh, what a great way to showcase our city, someone who was born and raised here, native here, you know, went to a good school, Bishop Kenny, went to a good college, Florida State but also has been a champion in this community. She loves the community. She loves what she's been doing. Uh, she loves the people she engaged with. Uh, she loves her family. Uh, that's the kind of person she is. I mean, uh, don't cross her. <laughs> she is just what every anchor uh, wants to, to be one day when he grows up, uh, a thoughtful journalist. Uh, who's not just a news reader, who truly understands the news and is engaged with um, the stories that you're reporting on. And Donna is a debater, no question about it. Uh, she's mellowed some from the first time we used to talk about politics. I'm talking about outside of the TV and outside of the uh, media. So I, I almost call Donna like the Barbara Walters of the First Coast area. Uh, she has done a lot of work over the years, she'll transition to help uh, many people and also help uh, journalism, I think. Whatever you have in your um, public persona, you can give back to your community in whole new ways. Donna already does it. She's really a model for all of us. I mean, the drive comes from way, way, way down deep in the corner of her soul. And she stands on a rock and she knows what she can accomplish. Besides the fact that she's gone through three major cancer uh, scares and it you know, she's been a, a miracle, and, and that has translated well into her marathon. We started actually running together uh, as she was receiving her therapy. Uh, so we used to go run together, you know, teams sometimes would join us, and we talked about life uh, in addition to talking about breast cancer. And one day she came and said, you know, I really want to do something unique, something has, that has not been done by others before, so let's start a marathon. And I said, let's go. We create our own lives. We're really responsible for who we are. And Donna's a creator. And Donna had an idea. And I remember when she first told me about it, and I, I thought, oh my gosh, that is so big. That is huge. You're just, there isn't a national marathon to fight breast cancer, so? So what does she do, as Donna would do, launch a foundation to help women? Uh, and to make a difference to, to really fight and come up with a cure for breast cancer. What she has done, the first national marathon and the research and everybody coming from all over the world to be here, it's been groundbreaking. It's really just been an honor. It was just an idea. And Donna demonstrates to all of us that if you have an idea, don't worry if it seems really big. Don't be dissuaded when people tell you it's crazy. And especially don't believe the people who tell you it can't be done. We're gonna miss her. Uh, watching her uh, on the news, but uh, we'll see more of her. I know she has great plans to do so much by working with a foundation. You know, as an author of The Good Fight, uh, she'll continue to fight for, for, for those in our community who really need the help. I'm very proud of her. She has made incredible strides in this community, 
and not just here, but for the whole world. I mean, what she's trying to do now would solve everything, just about. And it's a worldwide mission. And she's gonna do great. I mean, she knows the people, she has the talents that they need to communicate their message. I mean, it's gonna be huge. She's going out on top. She's going out on her term, and she's going towards something um, that, that means uh, probably even more to her. Um, and, and, you know, that's what else do you want for a friend? You have so much ahead of you. You've already given so much of yourself, and I wish for you in your next phase of life all the happiness and joy that a single person can imagine, and I know you will find it through your wonderful relationships with Tim and your children and your extended family, your friends, and your community and the big world out there that you've decided is part of your world too. I love you, Donna. I love you. God bless you uh, and wish you great success. You're going to do well. You're leaving me to hold the bag while you're going, you know. No, just go. It's fine. I do know that while she's here, she made a connection with her community where she was born and grew up. And I do know that while she was here, she made what would it have been like without her? Don't know. But I know what it's been with her. It's been good. Mom, nothing in my teeth? No. That's not on TV, is it? <laughs> hey, Hot Donna. We need to go out on a big bang with the president. It's been fun working with you, even though it wasn't that long. But every time I hear Madonna and Justin Timberlake, I'll think of you. It's Donna. I wish you the best. You know that we'll see you out at the 26.2 uh, with Donna. I can't guarantee I'm going to do all 26.2 miles, but we're going to get our team out there to do the relays. It's been a fun, fun, long trip, and I'm honored to call you my friend. And I wish you nothing but the best in the future. And I love everything you do with the Donna Foundation because I think it stands for something that's good in this world. You'll always be a part of our family. Um, good luck with ending breast cancer and more power to you. I love you. I've loved working with you. Love being on your board. Um, I will see you at the marathon. I think I'm going to try for the half this year. Best of luck to you with the foundation. Good luck. I could not be happier for you. Congratulations. I have learned so much from you. It's been an absolute honor to work with you and I wish you all the best. Can't wait to see you at the marathon. Donna, my forecast for you is for much success and much happiness now that you're going to be rich, wealthy, and retired. And don't forget about us poor folks back here at First Coast Do. just want to wish you much success and peace and rest in your new endeavors. I enjoy working with you. You taught me a lot. I miss you. I know that whatever you do, you're going to be wonderful at it. And I'm just glad that I got to work with you, even if it was for just a short time. Good luck. Uh, I'll miss your smile your fun personality and don't be a stranger and I'll probably call you anytime I have questions at like 10 59 p.m. 20 plus years with First Coast News what can I say from the sales department we wish you the very best 